there guys, this is PJ back at it working on another vehicle. Today we're working on a 2014 BMW 1 Series. Today we're going to be fitting a dashboard camera to the front of this car and we're going to be using a fitting kit. This particular one, around here, is an X-Base fitting kit. These are available from eBay, Amazon, a lot of the car retailers sell them. Normally in the region of sort of 15-20 pounds for this kind of pack. As you can see, it contains a replacement power cable for your camera, so you will not be using the one that comes with your camera. On the end of this particular one is a mini USB connection. Please take note, because some cameras do use different ones. They use a micro USB, or some use a little round connector. This is having an X-Base camera fitted, so this is compatible with it. We also comes with what is called a fuse spur. I'll just show you one of those. This is a fuse spur. And basically all this does is double up one of the sockets in the fuse box of the vehicle to be able to run more than one thing. So there's a little 2 amp fuse in it, that runs your camera, and the slot at the side is where you put the fuse that you pull out of the fuse box to run the original car circuit. And then this plugs in and effectively works like a household mains adapter where you plug it in and you get more sockets. Same sort of thing. On the end of it you get a female bullet connector and funnily enough on the power cable itself two wires, an earth connector, which we shall bolt behind the dashboard on one of the earthing points, and a male connector to plug into the end of your fuse spur, the end of this, okay? Now the only thing with the BMW to pay attention to is the fact that the fuse box is in the rear, so you are gonna need an extra roll of cable normally. Normally these kits aren't long enough. Sometimes they are, it depends on the length of the vehicle itself, but generally rule of thumb, you're gonna need a roll of sort of eight amp cable to run uh, as an extension from the end of this to the boot of the vehicle. So you're gonna need some bullet connectors. Make sure you get the red ones because the blue ones are a bigger size, they're the wrong size. Get the red connectors and you're gonna to need to extend it. I will show you where I run the cable on this and I will show you where I earth it, where I power it from and how to test your particular fuse box. Because you've got to bear in mind, each vehicle could be different depending on year and spec. So the fuse I use for this may not be the fuse that you use. You'll be looking for an accessory position fuse, nothing critical like ABS or airbags, something accessory position that goes on and off with the ignition so that your camera goes on and off with the ignition. Okay, now before we start, I just need to say to you that I am in no way held liable or responsible for any injury to yourself or damage to your vehicle by following this video guide. Right, first up guys, this is the other end of your cable. Okay, there's your mini USB connector. And it comes with a ferrite filter. This is to stop interference on radios, etc. If this isn't fitted, all it does, it's got little clips on it, look. So it pops open, and then you put your quiet wire across it, round it, and out. Literally like that, and then snap it shut. Without this, you will get interference, especially if you have a dab radio in the car, you'll get interference. And then what I normally do is get yourself three cable ties, wrap them around the cable, yeah? like so, snip them off, cover them in uh, some sort of electrical tape and basically this is to bulk the wire up so that it doesn't fall down from the top of the windscreen. screen. If you hit a big pothole the last thing you want is the cable dropping out from the headline and falling in front of you. The reason I cover them in tape is because when you cut cable tyres you probably know they've got quite sharp edges, you don't want it wearing away at the inside of your headline and when it's jigging around it just gives it a little bit more padding. Yeah. So what we can do now is go ahead, grab this, and tuck it. You can normally use your fingers on these, they're not normally too tight. Just sort of pop it up. Obviously I'm going to need both hands to do this. Pop it up there and uh, secure the cable. Now don't go at it like a bull in a gate, you know this stuff's sort of a fibre cardboard material, it's quite fragile. So bear that in mind when you, you're tucking it in. And we're going to run it all the way along until we get to the corner post here. There we go. Cable run along, a little bit left out so obviously it plugs into the uh, camera itself and then all the way to the edge here until we get to this particular area. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is grab the door trim. It normally just pulls off quite straightforward. Let me back up there so you get a decent view of it. Until you get to the top corner here and then you should be able to just lift that slightly. Now behind there is an airbag. There we go. No big deal. You can run your cable behind the airbag just sort of lift it forward and tuck it under it. If you haven't got much leverage on it, you may have to uh, just pull this forward a little bit more. If you don't fancy doing that, you can keep the cable high up so it goes above the airbag. So just tuck it up, round, and then drop it down the side here. It's 
no big deal. I mean, um, you know, if an airbag goes off, believe me, it'll move what's in the way when they go off. I have set them off on test cases before and they go with enough force to move a little wire out of the way. That is for sure. But anyway, tuck it underneath, which is uh, what I would normally do. If not, put it above it, just round and then down to the edge. So when you've got down to your corner here, we're going to be removing this end plate. This end plate has the airbag on off switch for the passenger side. Do not disconnect the connector from it because if you accidentally turn the ignition on, you'll get a warning light on your dashboard that will need turning off. So we'll pop that. Okay, so we've gone, gone down, pushed the rubber trim down. You're looking for a nice factory fit finish. You don't want to see any cable at all, okay? Nice and smooth. Just go down and tap all the way down on the rubber trim there. When you come to this area down at the, uh, the bottom, the head of the dash, it's very useful to have something like this. This is a Bojo tool, and basically it's a plastic leverage device. This will not damage your trim on your car. If you use a metal screwdriver, you are going to put marks on the end of the dashboard and make a right mess of it. These are available again, Amazon, eBay. They're normally about a pound for a little pack of three. And they're just a plastic leverage device. Very, very handy to have. Highly recommend those. So if we come around here, you're going to put your leverage device, just, just slide it in and then pop all the way around. You'll hear it pop. Pull your rubber off there. Top clip's normally a bit of a pig. There we go. But like I say, do not unplug this leave this plugged in so if you do forget and switch your ignition on you're gonna to have to go to the garage to get a warning light switched off and we don't want that put that to one side don't shut your passenger door because obviously you'll smash it yeah here we have a nice mounting bolt for the dashboard this is ideal for the earth connector so we're going to undo this 13 millimeter bolt and put the earth point to that now when you're doing this bolt, it's ideal to have like a magnetic socket, socket ideally. If not, wrap a bit of tape around the inside edge of your socket and it will hold it in place so you don't drop the uh, nut down the back of the dashboard. But go ahead and take this off, ready for your earth connection. And there we go. A decent view because of the shadows there guys. We've actually got a sunny day in England. Very, very rare thing. Okay, so we've got our earth connection over the bolt. I've put a washer behind it there just to seat it nicely so it doesn't get squished into the dashboard mount. And then obviously put your nut back on, tighten it up. Don't worry, your dashboard's not going to move anywhere. It has got more mounting bolts holding it in place. This will affect absolutely nothing, okay? So tighten it up and that is your earth connection finished and we can continue on to the power cable then. When putting your end cap back on, just make sure the wires are all nicely tucked in and not catching on anything. And then it's on little spring clips, so all we've got to do is give it a bit of a bit of a whack, yeah, and it'll uh, pop back on again. Make sure your wires tucked down the edge so it comes out down here near the footwell, and obviously push rubber trim nice and firmly back home again until you get to the lower area here. Now, obviously, because we're going to go low on this one rather than high over the headlining, we're going to be removing the sill trim. Now these seal trims are on little poppers, sometimes you can put your hand under them and pop them off, sometimes you'll need to lever them. This one's quite tight so it's never been off before. Just be careful it doesn't shatter, especially if it's cold weather because the little plastic clips are, can be quite strong as you can see and you don't want it cracking. So if it's cold weather, bear that in mind, you're going to have to pay a little bit of care with it. So let's just pop all that off and I'll show you the clips. Okay, now if like this particular uh, person's car, all your clips have come out of the trim, so there's the sole trim, yeah, it's popped off, and they're still left in their original holes, and on this one, every single one has done that, which is fantastic, you're going to have to pop them out, so you know, you can get your trim tool under them, and normally they'll just sort of, there you go, come out as such, and then you just simply slide them back in. There's a stopper at the end, so they only go on one way. Slide them all back in and then your trim's ready for reapplying. Obviously we're going to now be lifting the carpet up, running the cable all the way along until we get to the rear seat area. And there we go. Power cable now tucked right out of the way, right down here under the under the foam carpet edge there, all the way along and we're now ready to pop our trim back on. Now the little lugs do move up and down a bit, so you have to sort of line them up. But uh, it's, not, it's not difficult, you just start with one and work your way along it and gently tap as you go. So when you line one up, like that one, just give it a, a whack. I'm going to need both hands to do this, but I think you get the gist of it. Tap, 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 all the way along. And at the moment we now have our power cable right back here, look, down near the edge of the seat, ready to go to the uh, boot area. 
Okay, so your fuse box is in the rear of the car and it's under the boot floor. So this is the bit where you actually regret driving around with half a ton of rubbish in your boot and like the owner of this car probably doing less miles per gallon because of it. So after emptying the boot for half an hour, we can now lift the boot floor, take it out and hey presto, there's your fuse box. So you need to be running your power cable up to that. Right, so we're inside the vehicle and basically we've tucked the power cable, the red cable, down the edge here. It can be quite tricky to do, so uh, just bear that in mind. Sorry, I think my camera just rotated there. I didn't mean to do that, I apologise. It's the awkward seating position you have to get yourself into to access the fuse box on this vehicle. So tuck it down here, under there, and then feed your power cable up and under. So down here, yeah. Under there, pop it out here and connect it to one that comes from the front so obviously we've got to extend it to get it along to here all right guys we're now at the point where we're going to be uh, using figuring out what fuse we've got our fuse spur connected pull it connected into the extension wire and we're at the fuse box we've took the cable up underneath on the original things and we've come round here under here under this padding and down like I was saying it's all hidden out of the way so if you're using a multimeter, hopefully you've got some knowledge of how to use it, because obviously you need it to be able to read 12 volts. You can use one of those little test probes that light up, like the little screwdriver things where you touch them on a circuit and they illuminate, that'll be fine. So with your ignition off, yeah, no key in the ignition or anything like that, or if it's keyless, just make sure the key is out of the way and the ignition button isn't pressed. So ignition off, if your test probe out, which I've done, get the other end of it, we're reading zero at the moment, yeah? We're looking for a fuse that is still zero, yeah? So as we go along, we've got zero readout. That one's live all the time, so that's no good. We need one that goes on and off with the ignition. Now, I've done hundreds of these, and I sort of know which row of fuses are alive and what aren't. Normally, generally speaking, this end row is what you're looking for. Um, there we go. All of them are dead, yeah? Then what we're going to do, so we're just touching the prong on the end of the fuse look, on the metal bit. What we're going to do now is turn the ignition on and retest again. Remember to have a look in your owner's manual, make sure you're using an accessory fuse for this, nothing to do with airbags or ABS or engine management. So we're going to turn the ignition on now. Okay, I've just turned the ignition on on the vehicle. We're going to go for the very end little brown fuse here, the 5 amp, and there we go. That is ignition switched live, that goes on and off with the ignition. As are pretty much this entire row, which is quite normal. Like I say, pick yourself an accessory fuse. Depends on the spec of your vehicle, what options it's got, etc. as to what fuse does what. So you will have to double check. And mine myself there, nice and easy. So switch your ignition off. You're then free to pull the fuse you're gonna use and put the fuse spur in. So there we go, we've pulled the fuse out of the fuse box. We've shoved it in the end of the fuse spur. So you've got double circuits, like I was saying earlier. The little one there that comes with it runs the camera, secondary one the original circuit. Just pop that back in, like so, make sure it's nice and snug. Cable tie all your wiring up so it's not uh, going to foul anything and it keeps it out of the way so it's nice. Nice and tidy, yeah, we're looking for tidy and, and nice, nothing wants to be caught on anything. Obviously when you've done that put your boot floor back in and then we go to the front, put the camera on the window and give it a test. Okay, the particular camera going in this car is an X-Base Duo. This has front and rear cameras, as you can see there. And they're on a, a sort of a pivot, so you can rotate them to get past your headrest for the rear view, etc. Now, most decent cameras come with two mounts. They'll come with a suction mount, like so, which is fine for normal glass surfaces. Or, if your car's got like a textured black area next to the rear view mirror, you need to use something like this. This is a 3M sticky pad mount. So if we go up, here and if this area here is black and greyed out yeah and you can feel the texture you need the sticky pad mount if not like this car we can just use a suction mount and all should be good okay so with our camera mounted stuck to the window screen there power cable nicely tucked away roughly set the angles for now it doesn't matter your camera may be a front facing one so that doesn't matter at all press your ignition switch turn your ignition on and hopefully your camera will come on and indeed it does. There we go, there's your camera on. We've still got the protective film over the screen of this particular one. But uh, you have initial setup to do mostly on them, just kilometres per hour, miles per hour, that type of thing. And there we go, we have a view. So 
if you've reached that point, well done. You've just successfully fitted your own dashboard camera to the fuse box of your car and it will go on and off with the ignition of your vehicle. If you have any questions concerning this vehicle or any other for that matter, just pop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer you as quickly as possible. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye for now.